Hello again, everybody. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on Block, and today I want to switch topics a little bit and talk about trying to create a native experience for iOS users using Flutter. Uh, so what we're going to create today is uh, maybe not the hippest, freshest iOS app, but something that at least looks like it belongs uh, on an iOS device. Uh, we're going to have a, an entry page, which is just a simple button, and then we're going to take the counter app that you get through Flutter Create and just convert it so it looks more natural on an iOS device. So that's our project for today. Let's get started. So in the, the terminal, I'm gonna type flutter create iOS quick start tutorial. That's what I'm gonna, gonna call this. And we will open it in Visual Studio Code. Wait for it to recognize the emulator, and there it is. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run that. And while that is building through Xcode, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take out these comments. Should mention if you're just coming in fresh here, this does require a Mac and it, it requires that Xcode uh, is installed. I did not own a Mac until I started building with uh, with Flutter, and I had to break down and get one. And we'll take out this last comment here. All right, so this is the basic app that you get when you type Flutter Create into the terminal. Uh, I'd like to do one more thing to it. I'd like to add a welcome page before we start to look at uh, what's on the screen and, and talk about it. So uh, we've got this home page here. What I'd like to do is above it, so in between the My App and the above the, uh, the class My Home Page, we're going to create another class called Welcome Page. And we're going to make that a stateless widget. Okay, and that has one required method that is build. So we'll go ahead and do that. And on this page, we'll keep it real simple. We want to center. Uh, we want a child for that center widget. And the child is going to be a raised button. with a child of text enter app and an on pressed method that is going to take us to the click page or the the my home page so we're going to start on the welcome page we'll have a button that you click and go to the next page so on pressed we want navigator.push. We'll do a context, a material page route. There'll be a builder for that, that route. This is the sort of thing you can do through route, uh, through you can name routes, and then the pushing and popping becomes much easier, but I would like to just focus on one thing in each video, so we're not gonna not gonna take the time to set up named routes particularly just because we have just one route. All right, and that is a context, and it's going to go to my home page. Um, I'm just going to go copy and paste this because we actually want to pull in the title too. All right, we had our semicolon there. I'm just going to format it so it looks pretty. And we'll run that, and so we want to restart this. Oop. One more thing I forgot to do here. So instead of the um, my home page as our home page, we're going to have welcome page, right? So that 
when this app starts it will go to the welcome page and so we get this and it takes us to there we also want to wrap uh, this center in a scaffold so it doesn't uh, have that back black background so let's wrap the center with a scaffold widget and we don't want child because there's no child on the scaffold that would be the body all right we'll format that we'll save that and just restart so there we go we come in we click enter app and we're taken to this this counter page now this has some things going for it that are immediately recognizable to an ios user uh, we've got this uh, back button up here that is native to an ios user and the page transition if you watch this this is how a an ios page transition looks uh, it is different if you run this app in an android emulator this same app is going to transition differently uh, to the to the next page so that's nice that's native uh, there are some things on this page however that are not native to an ios user and uh, you're you're working against the grain because they don't fit the uh, the human interface standards for for ios uh, one of which is we've got roboto text here so this is the the native text for android that's going to look a little strange for an ios user we have a fab button down here used for the counter that is not part of the iOS human interface standards, so that is not going to be something that is instantly recognizable and intuitive to an iOS user. And this button here is a material button. So let's take this app and let's convert it so that it will look native and feel native instantly to an iOS user. All right, so we're going to do that by splitting the app presentation logic based on our, our search of which platform is accessing it. So that's going to start up here with a material app. So material app, material design, native to Android. Uh, that's not necessarily what iOS users uh, are, are familiar with and want to see right out of the bat. So we want to, when we come into our build, uh, build method, we want to figure out what platform we're on and maybe present a different, uh, different platform to them or a different uh, look and feel to them. So I'm going to put an if statement up here. I am going to type platform and then I'm going to hit enter. But what I'm actually doing is importing dart.io. That's the ability to search the platform. You can see, is it Windows? Is it Android? Is it Fuchsia? Is it uh, Linux? I always do is iOS because I figure that's the stable one. Uh, there is a replacement in the works, supposedly out there, called Fuchsia for Android. I, I think iOS is going to be here to stay. So I'm going to ask, is it iOS? And if it's not iOS, that's when I want to present uh, the material look. But if it is iOS, that's when I want to give it that iOS styling. And then the else statement is going to be where the material app belongs. So we'll put that in there. So now, rather than return a material app, we are going to return a Cupertino app. And this is going to require an import as well. I'm going to use the auto import, but what I'm importing up here is the Cupertino package, which if you go to flutter.dev and you look in your widget catalog, we have a whole series of widgets that are designed to look uh, native on iOS devices. So you got all these options here. So you can go there if you need a reference. Okay. Cupertino app, I'm going to give it a title of same as below. I'm going to give it a theme and rather than a material theme, like we have here, I'm going to give it Cupertino theme data. And I'm actually going to leave that blank for now. Actually, we're going to leave it blank for the whole thing, but I just wanted to stick that in there so you could see where that goes. Uh, we want our home page to be a welcome page, and we want our semicolon. And so now when this boots up, It's going to ask, is it iOS? And it's going to give us a different uh, different presentation there. And this should break right there. 
So now when we hit that button, we're transitioning to a scaffold that is a material scaffold. So once we've started down this path, uh, you've got to complete it. Complete it. And we'll do that by going to uh, our welcome page. And we're going to do the same thing here. We've got a scaffold. Now this scaffold is a material scaffold. It doesn't say material scaffold. It just says scaffold, but it is a material scaffold. So not surprisingly, there is a, another option. So we'll ask here when this widget builds, is our platform iOS? And if it's not, we're going to present this material scaffold. But if it is, we are going to return a Cupertino page scaffold. And that is going to have a child. And this is going to have a center, just like uh, our material scaffold. And the center is going to have a child. And that is going to be a button, but it's not going to be a raise button because that's a material button. We are going to give it a Cupertino button. And that's going to have a child of text. Enter app, just like our, our material button. We're trying to do the same thing but with a different presentation. And our on press method, we are again just going to push to our home page, but we are not going to push a material route. Navigator push context. We are going to push a Cupertino page route. And that is going to have a builder. and a context that goes to, and I'm just going to copy this again. My home page with that title constructor. And we need a semicolon after here. So let me, let me widen that so you can see it all. Right. So we're pushing, we've got a builder. Let's run that and see how it looks. Okay, so right now we've got a, a button already that looks like something you'd see in an iOS device. We click it and then we still get the broken part because we haven't addressed the home page yet, but we're on our way. So let's go down here to our home page. This part up here can stay exactly the same. We've got our uh, stateful widget. We've got our, our uh, function for incrementing the counter. But we do want to present uh, a different scaffold if this is a material or if this is an iOS device. So if platform dot is iOS, and then we've got our else statement. You can also use a ternary statement if you want here, but I just find it more organized to have brackets around it. All right, so that'll be our material logic. Now to save a little typing, I'm going to take the scaffold, the material scaffold, and actually paste it into the iOS portion up here. So in between the if and the else, we're just going to stick that scaffold again in there, and then we can change it uh, to suit our needs. That'll save us a little typing. Uh, I don't want to return a scaffold for iOS. I want to return a Cupertino page scaffold. Instead of an app bar, there's a navigation bar in a Cupertino page scaffold. And you return not an, a material app bar, but a navigation, oops, Cupertino navigation, Cupertino navigation bar. There we go. They don't have title. They have middle. And they don't have body. They have child. The rest of this down to here is fine. We don't we don't need to change that. We do, however, need to get rid of the floating action button because that's not part of a Cupertino page scaffold. So I'm going to form, format that a little bit. All right. So if we save that and well, we don't even need to restart. So we've come into our 
our welcome page. We come here. This is looking much more like an iOS uh, application at this point. We have got San Francisco font here. We have got an app bar that looks like it belongs. We have got a uh, back button. We've got a, uh, a button here that is a Cupertino button with the Cupertino colors and styles. So the only thing we're missing is a way to act, actually increment the, that because we have taken away our, our fab button. So instead of a fab button, what you might do in iOS is use a plus sign up here on the navigation bar. This is a weird app to begin with. You don't normally increment. Usually that plus sign in material is you are adding to a, a record to a list. Uh, so it, to achieve the same thing in iOS, typically you have a plus sign up here on the app bar. So that's what we are going to do. So we're going to come up here to our Cupertino navigation bar. And after the middle portion, we are going to set up a trailing portion. All right, And we are going to put an icon there. Now you have icons, oops, icons dot, and you can start selecting, but there are actually Cupertino icons here. And we're going to select the add. So now we're going to get something, if we save that, that looks like a iOS add. It's not going to do anything because it's not a button. So let's wrap this with a new widget. And that widget is going to be a gesture detector. And this is this do all widget that allows you to specify what happens when really anything happens to any uh, widget on your screen. So we've got our child. Uh, we want to add, we've got all these different actions we could use, but we're just going to use an on tap. And when it's on, when it's tapped, we need a comma there. When it is tapped, we want our increment counter function called, not an instance of it, but we just want to pass it the function. I'm going to format that. So just like in our material app down here, when the floating action button was pressed, the increment counter function was called. Uh, in our Cupertino app, we want when the tap uh, happens on this plus sign, that's what we want to fire our counter. Uh, so let's go ahead and just restart the whole thing. So we're going to come in. We get a Cupertino button that says enter app. We get a nice page transition. We're taken to this page. We've got Cupertino style text there, San Francisco font. We've got a plus sign up here where iOS users would expect it. And when we click it, we increment it. So there you go. That is how you take the basic a Flutter app and make it look like something that belongs on an iOS device. Uh, we did have to branch a lot of logic. Does that make sense? Is it still a good cross-platform solution if you are creating separate logic for iOS and Android? Uh, that's a topic, I think, for a different video. Uh, so if you uh, have interest in that, I think I'm going to do just a video where I step out from behind the desk and, and talk a little bit about uh, cross-platform and how Flutter fits into that picture and where things seem to be going. So if you're interested in that, subscribe. If you're subscribed and you're deeply uninterested in that, unsubscribe so it doesn't show up in your feed. But anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.